get a producer to cap. So minimum nutrition is important for optimum production. And I think that's that's just a given. And some of the minerals we want to look at, and some of this chart that also we're kind of covered, but I was just talking about the room. Uh, in the minerals, we're concerned about major minerals and macro minerals. Those, those are the big things. Those are the first things we see on your feedback. Calcium and phosphorus and salt, uh, magnesium, and those are all important. Some of the others, let me tell you this. Some of the others are important too, but I asked one person, how, how do you know, how do you pick your minerals? How do you pick them on the feedback? How do you pick your minerals? He said, I just look at the biggest numbers. And one thing I want you to come away with tonight, it may not be the biggest numbers, you know, but I want you to have a good memory. And, and some of those reasons you don't want big numbers is sometimes you get things out of whack, there's a ratio or everything out of whack. The other thing you do is some, some of these things, some of these minerals like uh, sulfur and iron and so on, grass and antagonistic, there's some good things. So, that's not, that's not what we want to do. Now, and I'll show you, before we get into that, I'll show you a little, a little bit of how, how we work through that. The micro minerals, the trace minerals, I think in Kentucky, you know, if, if you're in Kentucky, you know, we all are, then I think you're looking at copper problems, selenium problems, and maybe zinc. But copper and selenium are big problems. It's not those are trace minerals. Those are minerals that may not cost you a whole lot, but they need, they need to be there. And, and while we're doing some research on this thing, maybe the form of those minerals is also pretty cool. So, I'll go here very quickly. The mineral content of course is grasses are low in phosphorus. And, and sometimes they're low in magnesium. But the low in phosphorus, grasses are low. So, what kind, what kind of phosphorus? Grasses. So, then it's, it's a big difference if you're feeding cows. Uh, maybe if you're finishing cows and feeding the high down the rain. You don't need any more phosphorus. You just need enough calcium to keep the calcium and phosphorus fresh a little bit. But if you're out of just eating, eating grass, then calcium is pretty high. And the phosphorus, you need to bring it up because grass is low in phosphorus. And phosphorus is fairly expensive. So we don't want to waste it. We want too much on the environment. <laughs> but uh, for good producing cows, they will need some phosphorus and they'll need it in about a uh, one to two ratio of calcium. So grasses are high and as uh, I was going to say, grains are low in, in calcium. And they're high in phosphorus, so they kind of go together. So, find a seven. Okay, if you were buying a mineral, if you were feeding byproduct feeds, great byproducts, <coughs> or if you were feeding just grass, if you were buying a mineral to correct any deficiencies with that, then you would be, you would actually buy a cheap mineral. You'd be buying something just high in calcium. The ground line is not very really high. Either. No, I guess it's not. So you can get a cheap mineral. Big not mineral kind of cheap. If you're on the range, if you're on pasture, and then, then you, you want to be low in phosphorus these roots and cows, especially those in the building. So you want to have to have something with phosphorus in it. Phosphorus is fairly expensive. So a range of minerals won't cost you a little bit. But if you go to the if you go to the feed store, you say, uh, I need a good mineral for you got. In any case, I'm going to find a mineral for what you got. It, it, it's kind of uh, irrelevant, right? Because they say, well, I've got something back there in the warehouse. <laughs> 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 and uh, uh, but if you want the best price on something, you can find a mineral that was designed for feedback caves. It won't cost you much. Because it's designed to be fed with grain. So I'm mean, just making a point there. It, it, it's really important that you pick something that supplements what you need. So let's move on. Now what, what affects, we, we formulate some minerals, what affects uh, uh, mineral intake from forages? Because that's what we're going to make up generally is the difference. But they don't get out of the forages. That's all you're putting in there. Because you're trying to make up what the difference is what they get and what they need. <coughs> so actually, and what, what's the forage mineral content? And, and that's pretty simple. But then you've got to think about what's the availability of these minerals now to our forages. Then you've got to think about, are there antagonists? Anybody around here have any salt or water? So, I mean, we frequently run across deficiencies. Uh, copper and selenium, so they have salt or water. Sometimes it's, it's uh, up and down the Ohio River, we're pretty close to power plants. We have too much salt in, in the grasses, and we have more than 0.35% in the rescue, then it's antagonistic to copper. And so sometimes you have to correct those deficiencies. And we 
talk a little about doing that. So there's a practice of attacking the iron and how that can be an attack and sometimes competes for absorption. And why would I tell you that? Well, I mean, there is this thing that's too much iron in the water, you see, that's a little bit more. But you also know that the color mineral is uh, red with, with iron oxide. Now, there's a lot of arguments for that, for that. that's antagonistic. But it might compete for absorption, and at least it does not. It's really good. At best, it does not. Now, they thought, if the mineral people would think, you need to buy, you want to ask for a red mineral. Why don't you ask for a red mineral? Makes no difference. Yeah, I was talking about why not ask for a red mineral. Because sometime ago, we started seeing plain white box of salt. Somebody thought, that red has got the trash mineral, it's got to be better. So you got that in mind. And, and you need to have what, what you need is, is, a, is a mineral. Don't, don't worry about the color. They're not worth too much about it. And finally, how much dry matter, how much of those pounds for a cat eat that determines how much mineral they're getting out for it. <laughs> so quickly, you don't worry about it too much. But, but the cat off the farm versus what's in the best you, uh, for example, just take the top line of the car. Cat requires 10 marks for living. Right? Okay, copper. In the best use, is generally on the license part. It's a little low at that kind of analysis here. So, if you look at if you look at availability, copper is only about 10, you know, 5 to 15 percent available. So, if the animal requires 10, and there's six in the pasture, and only 10 percent of that's available, that's point six, right? So, yes, they definitely want to use copper. That's on the same thing with selenium. Uh, iron not so much because iron is antagonistic. It's kind of a little bit. So, and, and the reason I'm telling you about this is when we do our mineral, I do mineral formulation, I used to take into account a lot of what I think is available in the grass and adjust it a little And uh, antagonists, antagonists can be created <coughs> in, in the feed. And I just told you that sometimes too much salt causes the too much, I mean, uh, insect, cold water plants and so on. Causes too much sulfur to be in the, in the grass. We can have too much antagonist in the water. So if you have a deficiency, that's the kind of thing we want to look at first. And if you have some water, or iron water, you might be suspicious if that's causing deficiency. And, and then you might think, well, how do you overcome that? We well, probably overcome that, obviously, with increased mineral content. But you can do something that's more available. If a mineral form is more available, that might be what we want to find. I mean, to correct that problem. And the other thing is, mineral antagonists are present in the mineral side. Do you believe that? Yeah, there's one axiom about it. You know, first, do no harm. And I don't mean, I don't mean to be ugly, but I, but I do. You are entitled to my opinion, and you can just take it for that. But if you go to some, some of these, I don't want to call any names, but general kind of store, general farm supply store, and you go ahead and they got a good mineral in there, but it's good for Indians and Jersey cows, sheep and goats, ponies, and cattle out there. They go to you, they don't be one of me almost never. You know, because and sometimes they have they have uh, a lot of too too tight, sometimes too much iron and stuff right there, enough to be in tightness. So we used to do sometimes these clinics where we have people bring in beef tight. And sometimes you just have to have to tell people. Oh, the thing is that it was free. Right? Because you can do it. And so that's how we got off the little beans about being there. One thing before I retired from this deal, I want to impress on people on that and make informed decisions on buying beans and stuff, especially mineral stuff. So that's, that's what we're trying to do. That's all we need to do. Sometimes we complex them to something that's organic. I can find an amino acid or a bit of protein, something people want to think of like that. But, but why do we do that? Well, picture this. Uh, and here is a molecule of copper being absorbed through the gut wall, and it's absorbed one way. Then they can complex it with amino acid, then it's absorbed like an amino acid is. So sometimes they're absorbed in different pathways. And so a lot of times we, we think maybe. That, that you know, uptake might be better. I, I don't think it's a data, in fact, it is. And sometimes, if you told me you had a summer well, 
So the first thing we try to do is then we probably those organic animals, organic forms, the increased uptake, those are coming to problem. So the better the new stimulation, we need more research, and that's why we're actually doing more research. So we considered all of this and looked at uh, some time ago, I decided we were going to make a recommendation on on the minimum. Now, I don't care what, I'll be honest with you, I don't care what the size is. We do formulate what we call an iron minimum. And a lot of times, companies will look at that size and they make one, they make one very similar to that. That's good. That's improved. That's all I care about. Or, or you can actually buy a deep iron, iron, iron mineral from the company. But I don't care. I mean, we don't get any check off or anything like that. We just do it. Because at that time, John, John, and I got tired of people getting so we don't do it. And uh, so we try to do better. So we formulated some because uh, somebody from another city was working in Kentucky, some people, and one of our own Kentucky people, some people, might not sell good enough. And it's not, I just told you, I mean, one thing is the trash minerals, uh, that is, it's not good enough. And we had a lot of people doing the homemade mixtures like we told you, and I, I knew one guy, a busy one guy, in the county that uh, was treating things the way in which is a high level can be possible. But, uh, so, so then you probably ought to have 26 parts per million in the field. Now, he's not going to get that for feed spoon, not for that end, and, and, and the cement is for his food. No, because quality control is kind of important. You know, and I, I, was like, I don't even want to know what kind of here. But there wasn't any uniform recommendation, so we decided to make one. I called the university lawyer and said, I don't know what you think about it. I don't know what the university do. And I said, to be honest with you, just make some regulation like some recommendation like two days of men. And this is, let's take it a little step farther and tell us what all good men are missing. He said, why aren't they doing it? You know, there, there's, uh, everybody's always afraid to do anything because of, uh, but sooner or later, you got, you know, all we're challenged to do is make a recommendation based on the best information today. And as long as we keep up with that, maybe it could change. As long as we keep up with that, then we ought to wait and make a recommendation on it. And I told the woman who was doing it, Dr. John Thomas and I, and I wasn't afraid of anything. We all get, always get challenged sometimes about being sales. And I said, well, John and I have both got 40 years of experience with detailed nutrition, and he's been doing some detailed nutrition. So unless somebody gives give you a real nice cap or jacket or something, you probably don't listen to it. But we take into think about it because like, it, it's an adequate for what we need. And, and then here, here's something I think about. Now maybe some people don't, but I would like to consider the reality. I can't make you a recommendation that's not me. And why am I telling you that? Well, because you, you get garage with a lot of things that technically aren't legal. Like a free choice mineral, and uh, it has yeah, some in it, uh, like for example, the type of mineral uh, that you want to be more adamant. And, and sometimes those things aren't legal in free choice mineral, so if somebody puts on the tag, it's to be handmade. Well, you don't have to be, you, you dump it out. You're like, well, we know that. So I'm trying to do, do whatever, it's a little bit like our pretenders, but we're trying to walk in straight and narrow and be legal. And it's the same thing with our mineral recommendations. If it's not legal, we can't recommend it. Now, and another problem that is, is, is why are big companies going to do research if you can just put some disclaimer on the tag? You know what I mean? Be your hand in it. Well, everybody knows you're not. If you are hand in it, that's okay. But if you're not, then that's, that's uh, mis mislaying or high research. So there's some liability. You've got to consider availability. You might have a minimum. That's available to you at a reasonable cost. But some of these things are really high. Everything, to be honest with you, is high. But some of them are really out of, out of, out of reach. And, and you don't really have any label on them. So you have to kind of sort through. Uh, intake, intake, like I said before, is mostly governed by how soft it is. So we put the salt in there because that's what the animal craves. You know what? I used to say, uh, let's put a, uh, a cafeteria style feeder. Put a little uh, ground ice on here, a little salt there, a little fresh mineral ice salt, a little of uh, you know phosphorus mineral over here, and 
the capital house for this. And, and, and that was all in all in our first part. Hey, we don't know. They crank something. Now, sometimes when they get really efficient, they crank other things to start knowledge. But by and large, you don't want to get to there. And then what? So we mix salt in there. And, and the amount of salt will do it, then you mix in beef flavors like the silver frames or something like that. And then there's some things that have negative effects on the intake, like uh, myoxide. We always be feeding my heart. We always be feeding my heart right now to these brain damage tests. Look for fast tests. But the problem, what tastes quite good, is they don't like the taste of it. So we have to do a little bit better job of mixing it. Sometimes if you have a real serious consideration for a problem, you may have to mix it with brain to get them to eat enough to prevent the fast tests. And the reason that we go ahead a lot of minerals and, and cattle generally get generic cut back on the fish. But don't add anything that's an antagonist like sulfur and iron. Be sure to avoid those. And uh, increase, generally we increase copper. And first of all, and I don't think this is a problem. But no copper oxide. Do not buy anything that says it's not copper oxide. Copper oxide is just not available. And I think we got all the companies to change that. The organic form of copper, you got to decide that. And, and uh, I'll show you in just a second, I'll be brief. I'll show you in a second, but I think you should uh, probably use a mixture of half organic and half, uh, you know, I'm going to say, it sounds strange that I would say that, but I'm beginning, I'm beginning to believe that pretty strongly. So, so then we use the maximum level level based on intake, and we may, we recommend half. Uh, that's from the organic form. Now, the natural level that's uh, the green oil that, that's allowed is three milligrams per head per day. That's all you can do. That's why we see a lot of them. If the, if the project is four ounces of intake, then that's 26 more. That's, that's the way the formula So, let's look at nutritional attributes of basic cow pack mineral. And uh, I'll start these. That's two minerals that we formulated we call the blue fire already mineral. And what we did, and the only difference in me and most other companies is, I'm just going to tell you how to get it. I mean, you know, it's not, you know, it's, uh, it's not a big mystery, and like, like some people need to, but, but here, you just said, okay, look at, look at about 30 years of data, a, a forage analysis in Kentucky. Here's about what HQ runs. That's just assuming the pastures are a best cube. And then that's assuming the cow eats about 22 or 23 pounds of uh, design matter a day. And that might be up on the low side. Some of these things I'm going to, I'll be honest with you, I'm keep them on the low side so that we don't, so we can keep cattle kind of safe in the back of the day. So you have to make what, what, this is what, this is what they need to have in their diet in the day of each one of these members. No, I'm not sorry. This is what supply out of them. From the forages, about 22 pounds of hay, uh, for example, or grass or that. So then we look at the amount, the amount I talked about there, but then this, this table was suggested for the point of time, we had available in the forage. And then by the way, on the right side of the column, don't worry about it, I'm just saying how we calculate it. Then that says, that's how much is available to the cow to use. And what we've got to do then is we've got to just make up the difference in what they get versus what they need. That's all we want to do. But we do want to do that. So then, if we assume that they eat three ounces of mineral, then, you know, we've got to get, we've got to be in that three ounces. We've got to get to make up that difference. And that's all we do there. So the cow cat recommendation then says, all the opportunities, we've got to get that around 100. And, uh, so we've got a cup of cat back now. Now, it's like the deer, we have another mineral called the, the uh, high piece in the grass cat And somebody says, why don't we just, it's too much trouble, why don't we just make up one mineral? Well, I don't because I can't. Uh, and then somebody will say, well, I'll be the high mountain deer friend. What if you don't want to do Because you don't want to be beat the high mountain and you don't need it. And, and I think it's because the system, the absorption system is a little lazy. <laughs> but it's also another cost too. And uh, so how many this time of year, you know, should have probably started if you had already started job start looking at spring cattle started feeding a high mag mineral. And we want these cows to get about twenty two grams of magnesium, actual magnesium in their system a day. 
So that, that's him. You just you formulate, you formulate these minerals to supply that. Now let me tell you this. Sometimes if it's formulated for six ounces, that's fine. If it's formulated for three, that's fine. If that's what they're eating. You know, but I want you want to have a correct amount. And sometimes they formulate a little bit. Cut the soft and it's going to put more flavor in than they eat by the mold and to get in your pocket. But, but you want to eat whatever, whatever the formula is for. And we formulated these for, for three, the back one for three, and the other one for four. And uh, I apologize for taking the code. Okay, so there are for situations for grass tech and carbon disease. And again, you have a pretty high, so control, control grass tech. We know if we can get that down on our knees and uh, into the cattle, that we don't, don't really have a problem with grass tech. But if you lose the cattle grass tech, if you make all the systems in the brain, be sure that you get that in So, and that's all, that's all that's about. So, and this was formulated for four axes, I'm kind of conservative with and the high high we, we formulated it exactly the same way, and I'm not going to talk about the, the summer now, but I'll tell you a little bit about the, the, uh, some frequently asked questions that, this, that I get is, uh, is mineral supplementation needed on grass? Is it? Of course, yes, of course it is. So we take care of it. Uh, is plain wine salt added? No, it's not. It's nothing but salt. And I'll tell you some other minerals that, that are needed. And it's yellow salt. Yellow salt ought to be better than black salt. It's got color. But why the yellow? My think, why the yellow? I mean, if you had a salt bar, that's not yellow. If you had a yellow salt bar, why the yellow? Got salt bar. Salt bar is what? It's an independent tag. So, no, it's not. It's not me, too. I need one of them in my middle. <laughs> so, red salt is not me, but we put iron. No. No, it's not. And again, first of all, you want to use the mineral with a dry So blocks probably not that great amount of you, and they're not formulated with everything, especially the paper. Now this this was in the big magazine. This this just tickled the you know what I that's a recommendation. And they were so proud of this guy for mixing with him. And again, I'm telling you, you can't mix parts per million with the show. You <laughs> can't <laughs> And that's why, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not going to say, I have a little cement mixture, and you bought a little pre-mix, and stuff. I'm not going to say you couldn't do it. I'm not going to say you can't do it this way. Now, I'll have to say something that kind of embarrasses me. I kind of wonder. Yeah. I used, I used to always wonder, like, uh, I'm in Mississippi, I got a school to make the wedge, and you have to say, well, we're bigger, we got better bone, the grass is stronger. Why is the grass stronger? More mineral. So I thought we just sold it for better mineral. And I think, you see that big old guy right earlier? And we can, we can do this. We can do this. And, but no, we don't just part from the shop. I don't think I'll work on Uh, 
So the cattle, they need to be appropriate for the diet of the cattle. And again, feedlot minerals, different than range minerals. Range minerals are high. Somebody was a person that you might have on the top of the term, they said, you can't beat this one. You can't beat this one. Proud of the term. But, you know, it's no good. So, so what extra, what extra value? Vitamin A, you need more vitamin A. How much do you need? Well, I always think you need one, uh, for cows, about 1300, and this is how it is, about 1300 international units per pound of ground. So, a guy, you want to say 30, then yeah, that would be like, uh, I don't know, about 40, 40,000 international units of cow we need to get a day. That's what we would need to put in four ounces in, she didn't pull the so if you multiply that before it makes a pound, then that would be at least 160,000. So I usually say I put 200,000, 150, 200,000 units of vitamin A in the minimum mix. And add this to my condensed and so on, maybe they need those chelates, maybe they need those. Chelates again are just what we call inorganic form. Chelates means it's crap. It's like if, if I got a uh, common molecule there and I put a chelate is like an amino acid or a protein that's, that's combined together, then it, then it starts being absorbed by the amino acid. I told you that before. So let me know how much of the fuck I know. So our, our chelates can <coughs> for higher AI, we can keep pregnancy rates from fixed. We can go there and jump with pregnancy rates. Uh, greater availability and uh, we feel when antagonists are present. Sometimes with high stress. We think if there's more stress, then we may need a different mineral. And then if there's environmental concerns, yeah. So those are important. Now, I said all that. I, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about what we're doing in Princeton. This is, this is a trial we've been doing. It. This is actually, we finished about three years. No, it's a different trial. This is one before that. This is in a female. Where we were looking at selenium forms of selenium. And I would like to be doing a trial with uh, the copper. If, if I can get somebody to suck it out, you know. It was a brand of that work of copper. We could try to do something with like selenium. But we worked with the form of the selenium, and then all that was there is those cows, they were on the diet, and those were heifers. And we would take a three ounce packet, a three ounce packet of a, of a particular mineral mix, and give it to each one of those in their teeth. And that, that cow out there, if she's on, on figure one, she's got a transponder on her neck that won't let her over to figure one. And so, so you know that she got the right mineral and she got that amount. So we were, we were controlling it. We wanted to see, see what we learned from the various chaos of the transponder, the heavily transponder. Well, and one of the first things we saw was that the cellplex, and, and I didn't I can't do the cellplex, it's very expensive. And when we did this, it was unfunded at the time. We wanted to see if, if you know, if this, if this really worked. So we looked at it, said, can you get, can you get more on that? Be cell flex as opposed to being what NASE there, so we can sell that on the chart. And we had control rooms that didn't, that didn't get in. And uh, so the so we can sell that was better than control, but the cell flex was better than one of those. So we got, we got more, we got more selenium in the red blood cells, and we did liver biopsy. We actually took a liver biopsy every 28 days, and we had more uh, selenium in the liver. So uptake. It was working, so they did work. We, we definitely got more of it in the end of the cat system. Now, <coughs> we're definitely going to worry about this chart. But, but all this tells you what we decided to do. Was, you know, you've heard, you've been looking about genomics in cattle. We know what the new cattle, big cattle genome is. We know the genes in it. And now we know what those genes do. And what we try to do is see if we can regulate, if we can feed different things. Do we not regulate the gene, a good gene? I'm ready to a And that's all, that's what we were doing. We decided there that, that it ended up being confusing. I mean, you know, research is very, very clean. So what we did is, oddly enough, was some genes, some good genes were up there and they so you sell it out of cheap form. And, and some, some genes were up there and they buy the cell like your genes. And it appeared, it, it seemed to us initially that the genes that were up there that were cell flex control growth. And I'm sorry, the, the sodium cell cell line, the usual one. And the ones that were up there related by the cell flex, the organic form of mineral control, maybe immunity, 
as possible in reproduction. So we said, well, we've got to do some more work. But before we do that, in mind, we just said, okay, it looks like, it looks like a 50 50 mixture of the two might be good. So we decided, let's try a 50 50 mixture of the two. And it kind of makes good sense, is why we recommend that, is because you've got two different pathways working in the gut wall and in the organ, and you have two different pathways working inside the cell when they utilize, uh, for example, something. <laughs> so, maybe, maybe there's something going on there. Now, this just shows what we did. <laughs> this, was, this was a trial uh, <coughs> we did at the peppers, and I want to show you how to make a couple of points here. We fed, we fed peppers again, and we took these peppers, and we depleted them. We, we gave them no slim from all women. And then we turned around, they're at day zero, and we started feeding them. We kept some of them on the bottom line of the control, and didn't feed them anymore. Well, and the other, the line above that is some of the cell lines are old for Then I heard the top, we got the mix and the organic and the cell lines. So, so those, those two forms, uh, it was funny that the mix was up there, they were slightly higher than the, than the cell lines along, which was sort of confirmed for a time. Maybe, maybe we're feeding two pathways there. But I don't like one more time for you. Like if you produce finger cash, like the CPH cells and stuff like that. On sample, it, it basically took us somewhere close to 56 days, 56 days from the check, before we got the selenium in the liver back to normal then. Yeah, I mean, you don't just correct these with deficiencies like that. You keep it out there. So that was about a 56 day deal. So that'll tell you, if you just bought some cash and somebody had some little stress cash or wind that looked like they were deficient, and then you start thinking it'll take you about 56 days or so to get that back to normal. And, and so, that's why, I, if, if you buy the cattle, I got a buy from somebody that you came off with a mineral pill. And we, we checked on CPH, we, we've seen people, you know, who things right, give the right vaccine, and they have some, uh, some breaks on, on cattle that they sell. And, it, and then we find out that the mineral problem was a big problem. We put it off there. But that's what happens when you start thinking cattle. Now, but we, <laughs> don't get anything on the cattle, but I'm, I'm staying with uh, I'm going to give you time for this. I'm going to force whatever you want to force about some popcorn. Uh, but the effects of selenium on meat cows are the case. We did another trial with the honey. Those cows were inside, those cows were inside the barn on the ground field. So, uh, we got, we built this, you need to see right out here. We built the outside of what's, what's called Cayman Gates. And we got 24, we got 24 of those now instead of 5 out of 10. We got 24. So we got those cows trained. That's a pretty good size of deal, too, trying to number, uh, number 17 could already go to feed her 17 out of 24 to get her minimum. Now, but once we got a train, we left home in three years. So they, they, it wasn't a problem. And we put, we put that feeder out there and the water and the shade was around that because we wanted them to hang around there. We didn't want to have to go to different places. We wanted to try to, try to get the intake, intake of the region as we could. But I think we want to see you know, what happens to the cat. So that if the cat are on either of these marrow by themselves, the mixture of the two that we were treating got mighty better. And we're making that recommendation, I still think it's true. And, and that just shows you how we train them in there. We put, <laughs> put a pan on the mineral at a time. And, and then we we wash it, so every day you check it. And if, that, if they eat that, then we put some more in there. And we keep fresh mineral in there all the time. Uh, now the calves, the calves, uh, didn't, the calves got a mineral that didn't have any selenium of any kind. And, and they couldn't get in. We crept them, but their mineral feeder, their mineral feeder down there, all they had was the, the no selenium So we wanted to see how much selenium are you calves getting from those calves. And that's the way we can have those selenium, but the calves, the calves, and the calves and the uh, mineral feeder that was in there. Now this is what I was going to show you. The, the mineral we take over time, uh, I've got that for three years now. But it wasn't as high. It wasn't as high all the time as we thought. It's generally higher in the spring when the grass is kind of washing out a lot of water and gets dry. It tends to go down and we know that. But the other thing uh, that, that I want to show you here is in the charts. And again, I apologize to not worry about these charts. But we took we took these calves. And the calves, the calves, on day of birth, we castrated them. 
was done so far as you. We took a slide of the testimony of Texas and and then maybe we can study, study that and see if we're going to get to see what the difference in GDP I had expression. And it looked like, it looked like that the mixture was probably better at stimulating chromatogenesis, or maybe, maybe it means book ads should have been a little more perfect. Right? Is that a big deal? If it's true, then it could be a big deal. It could be a big deal for the program. Yeah, I mean, and so it did a pretty big deal for AI stuff. I mean, there's, we just AI a bunch of cows, 200 cows there. And, and I went back to check, there's quite a bit of difference among the bulls, the AI bulls in fertility. So anything you can do to improve fertility, I'm good. So we're working on that. We did another trial this summer where we fed bulls, different animals, and, and then we, we uh, brought them in a jacket over there for 28 days. And that gets pretty rough when you start messing with the bulls every 28 days. But we did. And uh, we were trying to see what one thing we could come up with. Now, the other thing, the other thing we saw out of our trial, in other words, this, this is the path right here. We saw that we uh, stimulated more in those cases, prior to the formation of estrogen, and so we made which if you use a growth stimulant, a lot of those estrogen, and so we made it to a growth stimulant, it's actually the same, same ingredient in uh, confidence. So, Everybody wants something natural, I mean, what do you fed natural? Now, the cell flex comes from uh, algae, and, and the manufactured like that. I mean, if you could get the animal to increase uh, the, 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 the estrogen and the beta, which is conceivable, which is growing for us, so maybe, maybe we could replace it. But these things are all out there that we're trying to do, and, and the heavy folks, and now I believe you. I think it's going to work. Anyway, in short, long story short, it's not going to be that yet. I got to go somewhere else. You got to do that popcorn. I'm sorry, but I got a few more lines. No, it's okay. I'm just kidding. But, I mean, that's why we should set time to make recommendations. And our latest recommendation is that I think we can do the two forms, you know, and it costs a little bit more. But uh, pregnancy rates this time, and, and one of the big numbers is not statistically significant, we didn't find it, but, but the, we have, I didn't think of this, we have three sets of cows out in the pasture of some mineral leaders, the three herds of cows that are getting these minerals, and, and then we follow them, and we, what we'd like to do, <laughs> what we can afford to, is, is meet these cows on it, and then stress them, maybe, maybe with the name of these challenges, and they can take them on the truck and haul them across the stage and back and bring them back in and see, see if it makes any difference on their immune system. You think it will. And, and I'll cover a little, little part out here. Let me tell you, let me think about this. We're, we're going to see all kinds of I mean, our food is so. Well, I mean, I guess that we can feed it. We can feed something and if it upregulates a gene that causes cancer, that's a bad thing. If it down there, that's a good thing. And I think we, we will see things like that. Uh, I'm talking about why, because she, she, she had a strong history of cancer in her family, so she did the genetic testing. And let me go on. Picture that I don't want to know. But in, in our new world, in our new world, what if you did know everything that she was susceptible to? Heart disease, Parkinson's, cancer, whatever. And then and, and you do you could an environment of what it is, or eat that. I mean, that's pretty soon you'll, you'll have your genome around here and you'll, you'll be able to tell. And, and we'll be better. Now, it scares the be cheaper about people. But just talk about GMOs. You know what? Now, this, this concerns me. I'm just talking to you, and I apologize for this, but I was talking to you about how they have to regulate genes. And you know what? They did, did a survey. I think it was Kansas. I believe it was all the ones. Did a survey, and the consumer said that anything, anything that had DNA in it, oh, it has to be labeled. You know what? Anything has DNA. In it. <laughs> 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 I mean, so we got all the way up. The people, the people. Were, I mean, it, it's not a good time right now to be in science because people are like. And, and, but we're trying, and, and, uh, the cost of keeping the blue is good. 
in, in the, I thought the big moral dilemma is how do you see the world that is, is anybody here about 34 years old? I think I see. But I'm not 34 years old. Well, that's what I was thinking. But how do you get to the infinity of world population of world government in your life before that 40 years later? In your life, it was pretty quick. So, how do you get to the world? Well, you charge them, they pay some of the rules for the Right. All the countries that are that are that are third world countries that are increasing the fact they don't have but they're not gonna be easy ones. Might be a lot of opposition, that's gonna be a lot of grand people, but they won't be easy ones. So so how do you beat them? And do we have to have a moral responsibility to it? I don't have an answer. I'm just telling you that's what you're gonna do. That's a social a social thing. And I think the whole country is, and this is thing we're working with right now, the biggest movement I'm seeing around here is a lot of grain farmers are producing so it's in a beef for the high end market. So I mean that's but but that's the other end of the extreme. And I'm not I'm not being moral, you know, I'm just telling you you need to understand that some of this information will get you. Don't be afraid of science. Now if you can be afraid of missions of it, you can be afraid of ignorance. But if if somebody in my mind could have discovered that you could down every day to cancer to you. You know what? I go for it. I don't care what I go for it. I want my kids to have it, but you I mean, I don't care what but I'm just telling you, you know, that we're trying we're trying to do those things. It's fairly expensive. The, the, every time we run the microwave analysis when we started on cattle and liver side it was a thousand dollars. And then we got down to two hundred and I expect it's pretty cheap. Uh it's cheaper now. So it's gonna get for these things are gonna get forward. You can get the gene, you, you can get genetic testing on the bull, or whatever, high market, or whatever. And, and that intrigues me. But I'm really intrigued by can you turn the gene on and off. <coughs> right? Because I think there's a lot of environmental factors and stuff. And I don't think we know much about it. And, you know, probably not just getting it forward. Now, I've got all the stuff on there. See, I've mean, still got time to get home. You know? So, we have, we have any questions about beef cattle and nutrition in general? I don't care. I've got one. Uh, is there any relation to your soul cycle and your mental needs? Uh, yes, but it can be more reliable. And if something low in the increase, it can be more reliable to test. I would test the plants rather than the soil. You know, because of the ones that are closer. I, I wouldn't try to formulate anything in mineral. Which kind of nice when you test, you test full, not my factory samples, but this one? Yes. And just, just like you test it, there's the forage analysis, and, and mm -hmm. you can do that, you can do that here, and then uh, ask for the you know, general analysis. And then can you see if you've got a problem? And you may not have, but if, if for example, sulfur, sulfur time you're seeing some problems, then you just, you just raise up to increase the power of the lab, the power of the lab, a little more, excuse me, your mineral. But I, I don't think, I mean, soil sample is just four days for rain. Uh, a different level in the soil, but I, I wouldn't use that as an index to the cow. You can see that's just not close enough. And then once you get the pipe things you gotta consider a little bit of play a little bit not too. But a good question I don't I can do that a lot. Anything else? Yes. Uh, are there mineral I mean there are particular mineral brands that are more reliable as far as do you all I guess you give us a list or what ought to be in there, but still you're looking at a tag tied to a bag. <coughs> uh, those, those minerals from the companies, uh, they they are under regulatory services, which in this state you were not under regulatory services. So they spot check those. So you spot check. And then they, then they publish violations. You get a copy of it. Uh, I think once a year we should get a copy of uh, violations for each company. And the biggest violation for you, you would, uh, I just offered my opinion. Okay. Yeah. Both of the pieces were pretty good. Some of the mom and pop operations, some of those bottom, the kind of pieces of the show, they may not work out of control, they're not as good. But most of them, uh, most of them were pretty good. We have to have a discussion formulating it. And at those low levels, and, and then we would send them to the White House and check them. And sometimes, sometimes they're not going to go out, but sometimes they're going to go We have to kind of reformulate it. Now, but I can't, I can't tell you the one of the chemical companies better than I still feel strong 
that they all have good minerals and they all have some that are designed for other uses. And, and I think we just uh, kind of, I would just, I mean, if they're too far away from what I made there, I'd ask why. Uh, and if you want that one, I'm okay with that. I can tell you that there's no commercial minerals I'm aware of that are going to be played in. Cell flex and so on cell mass, like I think. So the IRM should be. Did you have anything else about Kevin and Jim? Was the IRM based on the mineral reservation of the strength test in the state of jurisdiction? Like, the white color of jurisdiction, does that change much? Yeah, it would change. I mean, it's very much like the problem with that is that the state of jurisdiction is looking at, I just assume the base Q had a major kind of average of the state, and we're shooting. Yeah, but scattered. I'm not going to lie to that. So, if, if, you, if you wanted to do it right, I mean, you probably would take your own core samples and see where they fit, and then and come back and sort of do the same thing and, and have a custom mineral for your your farm. Would be, it would be one step better. Sure would. Because you may not, I mean, and that's, this, this is our start of It's pretty good. But, um, it could be, it could be, it could be a lot different. Because we check about the kinds of and some farms with the problems and the, the tie levels and tactics, but you might do a better job on your on your uh, soil fertilizers and some you might actually do that with kind of higher than the phosphorus, for example. Now, phosphorus, you might be getting too high in soil. That's the one that you don't want to get too high in soil. Uh, but we, we, we have to watch all those things. That's, that's a good question. Anything else? Uh, I told my wife, I mean, she said she promised me she had set and that TV set to take it, but I'm going to wait. I told her to go ahead and work with that. I'm going to take the last one. And, yeah, it's a good question. I don't know if there's one more thing. The story of Paul's game, you know, you've got to go to the way and you're going to make some stuff. I mean, did you want to make some money? I don't care. 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 I don't